It's really amazing how, how many mountains can be moved yes. if we passionately believe and resolute, resolutely act on our belief. Yes, even mountains of death. I should like to thank Jubilee USA Network for inviting me to speak <coughs> at this important event that focuses our minds, pulls the strings of our hearts, and draws out the chorus of our shared humanity as we strive to break the chains of death that hang like an albatross around the necks of poor nations around the world, threatening to sink them into the depths of irrelevance in a sea of globalization. Debt relief works, and I'm here to provide testimony on the impact of debt cancellation in Tanzania. For 10 years, I worked as a speechwriter and personal assistant to the immediate past president of Tanzania, Ben Kapp. And for 10 years, we worked on debt relief for our country in partnership with most of you here. When President Kappa came to office in late 1995, Tanzania was a distressingly highly indebted poor country with an external debt of almost 8 billion US dollars. Now that may not seem too much in this room, but in that year, that was equivalent to 10 years of our exports. We were spending 35% of our domestic revenue to service only a part of our debt obligations. And that amount was sufficient to finance seven major ministries. We were spending more on debt service than on health and education combined. For every dollar we spent on debt on health, we spent four dollars on debt service. Yet, we kept on sinking in the quicksand of debt. In the mid-1990s, almost all indicators for basic education were in free fall. The gross enrollment rate had fallen from 98% in the early 1980s to 77% in 2000, the year we qualified for interim debt relief. The net enrollment likewise had fallen from 80% to only 58.8%. Thousands of qualified teachers could not be employed, even as the teacher-student ratios were unacceptably <coughs> high. Science students complete a secondary school without ever being in a laboratory because there were none. In some schools, a whole class would share less than five textbooks. The pass rate in primary schools was a pitiful 19.3% in 1999. Then in 2000, Tanzania became eligible for interim debt relief under the Enhanced Highly Debt Poor Countries Initiative Framework. And in November 2001, we reached the completion point. And by December 2005, as President Kappa was ending over power to his success, Tanzania's historical multilateral debt was finally cancelled. And I'm here really to thank all of you for that. And we put in place an open and transparent system of using debt relief, directing all of the money to priority interventions in education, health, water, rural roads, HIV, AIDS. And let me tell you what we did with regard to education only for the sake of time. With regard to access to education, we were able to abolish school fees. And immediately there was a 50% increase in primary school enrollment between 2004 and 2000, 2000 and 2004. An additional 2.7 million kids went to school raising the gross enrollment rate from 77.6% to 106.3%, and the not net enrollment rate from 58.8% to 90.5%. Today, the net enrollment rate is over 96%, and gender parity has been attained. We also improved the quality of education. In those three years, there was a 106.3% increase in the number of teachers. An addition of 62,600 teachers were recruited and retrained. The book student ratio improved from one book for eight kids to one book to three kids. 9,100 science teaching kits were supplied to schools. The pass rate in primary schools increased from 19.3% in 1999 to 48.6% in 2004, 
and last year it was 70.5%, 45% of them girls. Ladies and gentlemen, I could have spoken about the tremendous progress equally being made in health, tertiary education, water. But I do hope, however, that my testimony has been able to convey the following key messages. First, perseverance pays. In 1995, few believed a decision would be reached to cancel the historical debt of countries such as Tanzania. Yet with your support, it has happened, and we are eternally grateful for your support. Two, debt relief for all deserving countries is possible if there is political will. Our venue today is a good place to focus our plea for political will, and we are grateful for the good messages we had this morning. Three, if properly channeled and managed, debt relief can make an important contribution to poverty reduction and growth. It has done so in Tanzania. It can do so elsewhere. Four, the case for further debt relief has been made, not only by the need of those yet to get it, but also by the experience and testimony of those who have, like Tanzania. And fifth and lastly, emboldened by these successes and propelled by the acute needs of other poor countries, we can only move forward with greater zeal. And on to Jubilee. I thank you for your kindness.